Hello ladies and gentlemen and movie lovers of all kind and welcome back to the channel. As always I am your host Brett Murphy and for today's video I have a brand new ranking for you all as I am going to be ranking all 13 of the Spider-Man movies. So as most of you will likely know at this point Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse has web swung its way into our theaters. And so far it has been doing big numbers both in terms of extremely positive reviews and doing triple, quadruple, quintuple the numbers of its predecessor into the Spider-Verse. And with this now being the 13th Spider-Man or Spider-Man Universe movie on the big screen, it's about time to find out where it lands among the rest. Before I hop into the actual ranking itself, I just wanted to let you all know that I have an entire playlist dedicated to all of my ranking videos. There is well over 100 videos currently on that playlist, so if rankings are your thing then be sure to check that out and I guarantee you'll find something you like. And so without further ado, let's hop right into things. Number 13, Morbius. Yeah, this was absolutely an obvious one. You really should have seen this one coming because this movie is just flat out not good. It's plain and simple. It is not an enjoyable movie, at least for me anyway. I'm sure there are definitely people out there that like it. I'm just not one of them. Now look, there's a difference between a bad movie that knows how to make sure you have fun or a bad movie that's just so bad it's actually kind of good. But no, Morbius's biggest offense is not that it's just bad, but it's also boring. The only reason it may be even remotely worth watching is because of Matt Smith because the dude just knows exactly what kind of movie it is and he plays into the over the top and goofiness of it and is just having a fun time. Everything else, just not my cup of tea. Number 12, Venom. This one may actually be a little bit of a controversial pick because people seem to love the first Venom. A lot of people have it pretty high on the list. It actually has decent okay-ish reviews from audiences at least and it made a killing at the box office and especially going to be controversial because I have it below Venom Let There Be Carnage which a lot of people apparently don't like. Now look, from this point on, including this first Venom movie, I enjoy all of these movies at least to a certain degree because I do have a lot of fun with this first Venom movie. Its issues just lie with the fact that it's really generic, extremely just basic and simple, a very just run-of-the-mill cookie-cutter comic book movie, and they completely wasted Riz Ahmed, who is one of the best actors working today. He just plays the most generic villain possible, so that really sucked. And the final fight is just bad. It's essentially just two CGI goops splashing into one another. Nevertheless though, the movie does still have some decent comedy and some fun standout action set pieces, but that doesn't take away from the many, many issues it has. Number 11, Venom Let There Be Carnage. So, yes, Let There Be Carnage is above the first Venom, which is controversial enough, but not much higher. I'd probably score them the exact same, but the reason that I put Let There Be Carnage above the first Venom is because it does pretty much all the exact same things. It's essentially the same movie, but it does have a bit more action, a shorter runtime, and a much much better villain. We have our first live action version of Carnage played by Woody Harrelson and I thought that he was awesome. Again, it was like a similar like the Matt Smith effect in Morbius. Harrelson just knew what kind of movie it was. He leaned into the campiness of it. He leaned into the offbeat humor and I really enjoyed that. So it has pretty much all the exact same issues that the first Venom has but again it upped the pacing of the movie. It's more non-stop action and a far superior villain in my mind. Number 10, The Amazing Spider-Man. This absolutely could be seen as another controversial placement, and truth be told, I actually really, really like this movie. Like, I like it a lot. I saw it opening weekend twice, back-to-back -back days. I went on a Saturday and then a Sunday. I enjoyed it that much, and I have seen it many, many times. Andrew Garfield is a perfect Peter Parker and a perfect Spider-Man. His dynamic with Emma Stone's Gwen Stacy is probably the best part of the movie. I actually really like the 
the style of suit that they went with for this one. Webb actually did a really good job at making this feel different and refreshing and new and exciting from the Raimi movies. I really do like the lizard as a villain, but I think that he could have used a lot more character development and it's quite unfortunate because there are quite a few deleted scenes out there that show that the lizard was actually supposed to have a lot more depth and development and screen time overall. That being taken out of the movie, I think actually was to the detriment of the movie. It does definitely, you know, tread along many of the same beats that past Spider-Man movies have. And I think that it has a few too many kind of lulls, kind of, you know, there's peaks and there's valleys. There's a few too many valleys here that really sort of serve to just kind of chop the pacing up a little too much and slow the movie down. But nevertheless, I revisit this one very often as I still enjoy it a lot. Number nine, The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Hey oh, talk about controversial placements. I know some people that think that this is just flat out the worst comic book movie of all time, the worst Spider-Man movie ever, and I just have to disagree. I think this movie is vastly overhated and severely underrated. Is it still a mess? Yes. Way too many things going on. This movie would have been so much better and I think received so much more positively if they just had Electro as the main villain, didn't bother trying to shoehorn Rhino in, didn't bother trying to shoehorn in the Green Goblin, and lead up to a Sinister Six movie that never ended up happening anyway. Yes, it's a mess, it's needlessly convoluted, there's just way too many cooks in the kitchen here, but I think that this movie has a lot of positive to offer. It is one of the best, if not arguably the best, live action Spider-Man suit. I think that this is the best web swinging we have ever had on screen, and it's got some real fun standout action sequences and good solid dramatic beats. I think everything towards the end with Gwen is done so extremely well. Yes, they're on and off again relationships is annoying, but it doesn't take away from the fact that the relationship is, once again, the best part of these two movies. I love the Times Square sequence. The score to this movie is just fan-freaking-tastic. Absolutely chef's kiss. I love Electro's theme. I love the new Spider-Man theme. So I truthfully do feel like this movie has so much more to offer than a lot of people give it credit for. But is it still a needlessly convoluted, overstuffed mess? 100%. Number 8. Spider-Man 3. This one got nudged up ever so slightly from the last time that I did this ranking. This movie is a prime example of studio interference and too many cooks in the kitchen. Raimi has been very transparent over the years about how he didn't want to include Venom, how he didn't want to do this, how he didn't want to do that, and the studio just kind of kept forcing his hand, and it was such a miserable experience, and that's why we never got a planned Spider-Man 4. And I really don't need to go into all of the issues. This movie has has been out for a decade and a half now, and if you're watching this video, you have definitely seen Spider-Man 3. Many people love it and have a lot of nostalgia for it, and many people just flat out hate it, and I lean more towards the nostalgia because I do think that many of the Raimi staples are still definitely in here, and this movie blew my mind when I was nine years old and saw it in theaters opening night with a packed crowd. I still remember everything about it, and I have so many good memories with this movie, despite its flaws. I feel like every time I watch it, I pick up on something new to dislike, but it doesn't take away from the things that I truthfully love. Number seven, Spider-Man Homecoming. Honestly, I can't think of a better way to do an introductory Spider-Man movie in the larger MCU, especially this late in the game. This was the perfect segue into his own solo trilogy in the greater MCU. I think Michael Keaton crushes it as the villain. I think that Tom Holland is a perfectly casted Spider-Man. I think that all three live-action Spider-Men that we've gotten have been perfectly casted, both as Peter and as Spider-Man. I love the sort of love interest and overall friend group that Peter has. He's the one version of Spider-Man that does actually feel like a real high schooler. And I love that we focus on more of this smaller scale nitty gritty stuff and focus focus on him just being like awkward and very shy and things like that. This movie can 100% and truly does stand on its own. I really, really do like it. My only issue is that it feels a little too small scale, like they took the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man just a little too seriously. I wish we got to see him explore New York a little bit more and sort of have these bigger set pieces, but he never really got that all that much in any of his movies really, but I feel like you really feel it in this one in particular. Number six. Spider-Man Far From Home 
Far From Home and Homecoming are neck and neck. They're pretty much dead even. I think Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio is every bit as good as Michael Keaton as the Vulture. I like that we for the first time got to see Spidey out of New York as he's out exploring Europe. I like that he gets many different costumes here. I like that it takes place and really does show the ripple effects of Avengers Endgame, although I don't like the way that they handled the blip in this. It kind of irked me a little bit, and I don't love Mysterio's backstory because he's basically just an Iron Man villain. And to this very day, I do not believe Mysterio's illusion tech for a single second. Even in the MCU, it just doesn't make sense. Some of the action scenes can be very fun and exciting, but sometimes I think they lean a little too heavily into the CGI, and it almost feels like I'm watching a bit of a cartoon. But again, everything else is done well. The casting is perfect. I love seeing Peter struggle with being Peter and wanting to be a high school kid, especially coming fresh off of all of the Avengers stuff and balancing the Spider-Man stuff and then also balancing like the loss of Tony Stark and so many other just good, strong themes in here. It's not without its issues, but again, ever so slightly above homecoming for me. Number five, Spider-Man. Okay, I've been seeing way too much Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy slander on social media lately. So many people saying that these movies haven't aged well at all. So many people saying they weren't good in the first place. So many people saying that it's just nostalgia. Who the hell cares? If I have nostalgia for a movie or someone else does, that doesn't, shouldn't discredit our love for it at all. And honestly, I think that's total bullshit. The Raimi trilogy, apart from three, so I guess just Spider-Man 1 and 2, are just absolute classics at this point, and they hold up extremely well. And no one is ever going to convince me otherwise. Sure, there are some things in here that haven't aged the best. Some of the effects, yeah, okay, it was 2001 slash 2. Some of the dialogue is very early 2000s, a little clunky, a little awkward, but it's got arguably the best final fight of all of these Spider-Man movies. It's got great practical effects. It's got flawless casting. Danny Elfman's score is damn iconic. It feels big and epic and fun, but also very contained and personal. And that's just what Raimi does well. His filmmaking is so very unique. It definitely stands on its own and it undoubtedly shines through here in this first Spider-Man movie. Number four. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Straight up, this is one of the best sequels ever made. I think that this one does a lot of what Into the Spider-Verse did well, even better. If you felt that the animation styles and the colors and everything in Into the Spider-Verse were crazy, you ain't seen nothing yet. In this one, they just go all in. They go so damn hard on the different animation styles, on making this colorful and just so beautiful and stunning and gorgeous. It is some of the best animation I have ever seen of any style because it cycles through many styles. They go so just over the top cuckoo bananas with this stuff and it is so insane and so awesome. The storytelling once again is unbelievably superb. The voice performances are wonderful, even all of the new additions and you have some cool celebrity cameos in here too. Seeing all of the spider people on screen is just as jaw dropping as the trailers made it seem, even more so in the movie because you actually do spend a fair bit of time with all of these spider people and you're just picking up on all these different characters from all these different places and it is awesome. Despite being almost two and a half hours long, I honestly didn't feel the runtime at all. When the movie ended, I thought there was like 15, 20 minutes left and I would have been perfectly okay if there was. My only issues come with the fact that I don't feel that the runtime was necessary because there is a fair bit of downtime in here. Now the downtime doesn't drag, it's really good story stuff, it's really good character stuff, but there is just a lot of downtime in here and I also... I know that this is the middle part of a trilogy, and I know that this is definitely a part one of a two-part finale, but I just wish that we had more of a definitive ending. Everything else about it is just, again, it is magnificent, it is marvelous, I cannot emphasize my love for this movie enough, but it is just, it is definitely a part one. Where the movie ends, without getting into spoilers, it is not an ending. It is a lead up to a final part. Nevertheless though, I still did a short review on this movie and I gave it a 9 out of 10 so please do not take my criticisms as me not loving this movie because I, I definitely do. Number 3. Spider-Man No Way Home 
I'm not going to spend too much time on this one because I've talked about it time and time again. At the end of the day, is it an overstuffed fan service movie? Yeah, to a certain degree, but that doesn't bother me at all because I'm a fan that wants to be serviced. I will never forget seeing Toby and Andrew pop up on screen again after so many years. This movie just had me cycling through every known emotion. I was cheering, I was screaming, I was crying, I was laughing. It is definitely still a Tom Holland Spider-Man movie. I loved seeing all the these villains back, especially Willem Dafoe is now a top tier, not just Spider-Man villain or MCU villain, but comic book movie villain of all time. I do have a few little issues with it here and there, like the final act is just a little too busy and some of the villains absolutely got pushed to the wayside. But this is just straight up one of my favorite theater going experiences of all time. It's a movie that I'll never forget. And it's a movie that I'm still really, really stunned to think that it actually exists. Like this is a live action Spider-Verse movie. It's something that we never thought we were going to see happen and it, it happened. Number two, Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. Also not going to spend too much time on this one. Everything positive that I just said about Across the Spider-Verse applies to this movie. This is one of the best animated movies of all time. One of the best Spider-Man movies of all time. One of the best comic book movies of all time. They just, they did it right. So many people overlooked this movie when it first came out. It really didn't make a ton at the box office. I saw it opening night because I was excited right out of the gate and I am so glad I did because this movie impressed the hell out of me and every time I watch it, I like it more and more. Every time I watch it, I find something Something new to love, something new to enjoy, and I really do feel that this movie is going to stand the test of time and become known as one of the best animated classics ever. Number 1. Spider-Man 2 Okay, when I was talking about Raimi Trilogy slander earlier, there has been no greater victim in all of that fallout than Spider-Man 2. People saying it's not even the best in that trilogy, people saying it's like this and that and the other thing, nope. No, you'll never convince me. This right here, at least in my own humble opinion, is the pinnacle of the character. This one got everything right. What it means to be Spider-Man, juggles everything in Peter's personal life with his Spider-Man life, his love life, him trying to do right by this and trying to do right by that. What it means to be a hero with Aunt May's speech is superb. It's got the best action of all of these Spider-Man movies. That subway train fight will go down in history as well one of the greatest movie fight scenes ever. Alfred Molina is incredible as Doc Ock. I love his backstory. This movie also manages to splice in some like horror elements from Sam Raimi's roots. It goes big, it goes down and personal and into the nitty gritty of just Peter's inner workings. Everything about this movie to me is, it, it's flawless. It's a flawless movie, a flawless comic book movie, a flawless superhero movie, and still to this day, Almost 20 years later, it is the best, without a doubt in my mind, the best Spider-Man movie. So that is all for today's video, folks. Be sure to let me know down in the comments if you agree or disagree with my ranking. While you're at it, don't forget to let me know how you would have ranked all 13 of the Spider-Man movies. If you're a movie lover whatsoever, then my channel is the place to be for you. Be it rankings like this one, top 10 videos, versus videos, tier videos, I have it all, and so much more with new series brewing behind the scenes all the time and coming to the channel for you to enjoy soon. There is already well over 800 videos on the channel for you to enjoy. So if you enjoyed this particular video, then be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if any of that sounds like it's right for you and you want to see more from me, then smash that subscribe button right now. While you're at it, don't forget to ring that little bell icon. That way you can be notified about all of my latest uploads. And as always, stay safe. Thank you so much for watching. And that's a wrap. Hey you, yeah you, if you made it this far, just know I appreciate you. And while you're here, consider hitting that subscribe button.